Hello everyone, we are pleased to welcome you on this live video about EPF and EFTP summer program on smart cities and engineering for sustainable architecture. Uh, our guests today are Farina Salaki, lecturer in building and sustainable cities at EPF Graduate School of Engineering and who happens to be also the academic coordinator of uh, the summer program. And uh, Sophie Caroline Isman, head of international department at EFTP Paris. Yes. Okay, just to remind you the process, uh, we will be together for about 30 minutes. Uh, feel free to send us all your questions. We will do our best to answer them live. Um, if you cannot make it until the end of the, the live, no worries. Uh, the replay will be online on both our website uh, as well tomorrow. So you won't miss anything from the, of the live chat today. <laughs> so are you ready? Shall we start? Okay. So maybe um, before starting with all the precise details of the summer program, uh, Farina, we could start with a, a global presentation of the summer school program. Could you tell us a bit more about uh, um, the goal, the specialty of the program, uh, how it's organized, the date, and etc. So this is our third edition of summer school. It's called Smart Cities and Engineering for Sustainable Architecture. And it's entirely in English for international students of different disciplines from and maybe sociology and social sciences all the way to architecture, urban planning, and also computer sciences, electrical engineering, etc. And so it's an opportunity for students to come and study together uh, and work on a real project. There are different uh, conferences, visits, technical visits, and cultural. And uh, it's organized in two cities. And one city is the city of Troyes, which is a historical city, and it's um, <clears throat> famous for its medieval architecture. And uh, of course, uh, the renovation projects that are taking place in architecture scale and also in city. And the second city is city of Paris, which is, I don't need to <laughs> add anything, uh, which is just famous for different things. Uh, for example, it's the birthplace of Gothic architecture and also one of the leader cities in terms of smart cities in France. There are a lot of projects taking, happen, taking place and also uh, it's important for sustainable development and uh, one of the strategic plans of France is called uh, Paris Intelligent et Durable, which is a smart, sustainable Paris, which is a project going on. So uh, it's the project that uh, it's divided into three, four parts, four uh, different modules. That yeah, this is a big change compared to uh, previous sessions. Uh, yes, the, exactly. the summer program is divided in different modules. Yes, so, so. we have four different themes. Mm, that each week is starting with a new thing, but still related to smart cities and engineering for sustainable architecture. So can you tell us a bit more about each model? Uh, so the first two modules are in Troyes. And uh, here we are going to talk about uh, comfort and security in uh, urban planning and also in architecture, so in built environment in general. And comfort, uh, so we talk about, for example, what uh, different comforts we can uh, take into consideration in a building or in a city, such as thermal comfort, uh, acoustic comfort, visual comfort, etc. And how we can increase this comfort, for example, um, in the existing buildings by renovation or, and using different technologies. In terms of security, also we talk about uh, the sense of security, for example, in um, smart houses, how different domotics and technologies can bring security of mind for you, or how uh, we have to um, think about security in terms of cyber security in cities. So this is the two modules in, in Troyes. And in the city of Paris, we have a, a part which we call it bio-digital. So it's, again, two weeks. The first week is um, about bio. Uh, bio is not a, a French term to say organic, as uh, one person mentioned, but it's a um, prefix um, that we can consider like bioclimatic architecture, biomimetics, um, biotechnology in smart uh, cities, etc. And also in terms of digital, it's about connected cities, uh, how we can consider technology in smart cities, uh, um, different kinds of aspects that we have to take into consideration, like mobility buildings, etc. Okay, cool program. Um, Sophie Caroline, how can we apply to the program and can we apply to all models or only one or maybe two or three, I don't know. I don't know. Yes, you could apply. That, that's the interest that we, uh, we thought of uh, compared to last year. Uh, students can, uh, can definitely uh, enroll for one week or two weeks or three weeks or obviously the four weeks in a whole. Um, but modules are independent from each other. 
So yeah, and a student, we could imagine that a student is interested in joining uh, the second module in Troyes and the first module in Paris, so that he can do the middle yeah. two weeks of uh, the month of July. So yeah, it's a, it's very easy, and that's a, yeah, the, the advantage that we have <laughs> from last year. And how do we apply? Oh, okay, uh, this is very easy. On uh, both websites, you have a a huge button, <laughs> which, is called, yeah, which is called uh, apply or register. So basically, uh, this is how you could uh, fill in the uh, the application, and uh, at the same time, you could uh, send out all the documents, uh, all the documents, uh, personal documentations uh, by email. So you can either upload uh, everything, or you could send out uh, a mail to information at estp.fr. Okay, great. And um, what kind of, of applicants are you looking for, both in academic terms and uh, in terms of personality also? Mm -hmm. Both of you. Okay. <laughs> um, well, basically open-minded students, mm -hmm. but uh, as Tarina uh, told, um, uh, said a minute ago, we, we could have students from any background, basically uh, just the interest in smart cities and architecture and the field of construction is good enough for uh, mm -hmm. Uh, to join the summer school. Um, I would say curious students, young and dynamic, of course, <laughs> but um, in any cases, uh, that's what we had uh, in the previous years. So, uh, Is there a level uh, required to enter the program? Uh, yeah, the person, I mean, the student has to be uh, either in bachelor's years, uh, we would say last years of bachelor, or bachelor program, or first year of master's program. But we also have students that were uh, in the doctorate, there's a PhD that, mm -hmm. that enrolled last year, and apparently they were happy about it too. So yeah, it's it's really an open-minded. Uh, and and what kind of uh, bachelor or diploma or studies uh, or social they uh, come from? Pro which countries? No, no. What kind of uh, uh, different degree? kind of uh, diplomas which are related to to building, uh, as I said, from, we can say, sociology, urban planning, architecture, computer sciences, electrical engineering, etc. So everything which is related into these mm. fields. Statistically, I, I should, we should probably mention that most students were coming from uh, architecture, okay. urbanism, yes. and engineering. But we had students from biology, for example, that would be interested in... So they should be interested in that. In the yeah, field. exactly. Okay, mm. very good. And um, in more uh, concrete way, uh, what are the fees of the, the program and what are all the, the administrative procedures maybe uh, for our students who live abroad or live outside Europe? Uh, what, sh what should they know? <laughs> uh, so the fee is uh, 950 euros per module, uh, which would come out to uh, uh, not multiply by four. It would, I mean, it would actually be uh, 3,500, 3,500. For the four modules, um, there's a discount applied if uh, the, the student joins the four modules. Um, the, uh, the, the administrative uh, procedure is pretty simple since uh, the student files uh, all documentations uh, as soon as the documents are uh, um, proofread proof and so on. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, the student is approved. Uh, we send out a, uh, an admission letter, and the student can uh, go for the embassy. I mean, go for the visa at the embassy. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, students are getting their visa within a month, mm -hmm. maximum two months. So we usually re recommend to the students to uh, apply in the month of April, something like that, at the latest. Uh, our closing deadline is supposed to be uh, April 15. Mm -hmm. So. Supposedly, the students have time between April 15 till the beginning of July to uh, get their visa. Mm -hmm. But we help as much as we can, so mm -hmm. we're very responsive. And if students have problems, that I mean, that was the case for one student last year. We waited until the last moment, and we called the embassy uh, ourselves to uh, get it uh, processed. And can you tell us more about all the logistics, the housing, transportation? Uh, what's in charge of the students? Uh, how yes. <laughs> uh, we um, we usually help the students out. Um, we help them out because we first of all we send them a guide. Uh, I mean, to uh, it's a welcoming guide that would help him or her uh, to get into to get around into Paris and Troyes. Uh, as soon as the student uh, lands in Paris, um, we uh, we could get them 
uh, from the airport to uh, to the train station if they are coming to Troyes uh, straight from Paris. They usually land in Paris and then take the train to Troyes. <laughs> um, this is not included in the uh, in the fee though, uh, in the tuition fee, uh, which I mean, what is included in the tuition fees is tuition and uh, accommodation uh, on site. So the transportation is not included since we don't know if students want to uh, enroll, enroll, sorry, uh, to join uh, Troyes or Paris. But we would help them and we would make the transfers if necessary and so on. On the campus of Cachan in STP in Paris, students are uh, on the campus, are uh, accommodated on the campus. There's a huge uh, uh, family house for all students. Um, in Troyes, there, there will be, um, there will be, uh, I guess, accommodated in the city, right? Yes. Yeah. In the, it's, a, it's an apartment uh, or a, a room, an individual uh, that they, they won't share, but it's common <laughs> in, in Paris. It's common bathroom. <laughs> in in Troyes, maybe in individual yes. rooms. Yeah. So. Okay, great. Um, maybe can you tell us more about the feedback of the students from previous sessions? Uh, first, can you tell us uh, where did they all come from? Uh, they, they came from all over the world, I guess. Yes. What countries were more represented? Uh, from from, from the first session yeah. till now, it's been yeah, it's been very uh, cosmopolitan. <laughs> I would say. Um, I mean, the, the the people that were coming from yeah, we had people from India, from Pakistan, from uh, Africa, from the UK, from South America, Brazil. Uh, we from even have France. <laughs> yes, actually that's true. And we had a from few China. students from China, true. Australia, we had one student from Australia. It's very diverse. Yeah. It is very diverse. And that's the uh, that's the enrichment part I would say. And did you have some feedback from those students about their yeah, It was very positive and uh, everyone was quite happy uh, to participate and also to see how other students work in their countries and maybe also in their specific field. For example, our student, uh, he was coming from France and our school, uh, he was very uh, we're interested in seeing how architecture students of another country work on the on the same project in, a, in a, another methodology. So it was quite enriching for them. And uh, uh, in terms of feedbacks that we received, uh, that's how we decided to modify a little bit also the program. Uh, for example, the previous years, it was three weeks. And so some of the students later, they told us that uh, they had difficulty in arranging for two weeks. Maybe it was the time of their vacations or they had exams, etc. So uh, in this way, uh, if we make it four different modules, there is a possibility for them to just apply for the, the week in which they are available. Uh, and also uh, there is also the choice of the uh, of the theme because uh, some people are interested in one theme more than in the other, so they have the choice uh, because smart cities and engineering for sustainable architecture is quite a large, uh, you know, vast uh, subject. So we decided uh, to uh, address uh, each part uh, in two modules. So you have parts that are really concentrated on smart cities and others that are more concentrated on architecture, sustainable architecture. So that was the change, I would say. I would add, positive. yeah. I would add a few things uh, to it. Uh, well, first, the, the, the teachers, the professors, are uh, the enriching, enriching part as well, because they are, not only the students are coming from all over the world, but the, the professors are too. So the, uh, the examples that, that are taught or that are shown are really examples from smart cities all over the world. So obviously, maybe a little bit more about France, but uh, in the field trips and the uh, uh, the cultural uh, visits, but the uh, the professors are really um, giving a, a, a whole uh, new idea to the students as well, and um, and I would say students were not complaining, but they were saying that we wouldn't leave them enough time to uh, <laughs> enough free time or enough time to uh, to get around and to uh, to enjoy as uh, you know the touristic aspects of the two cities as well. So we decided to um, to balance a little bit more the teaching part and uh, to leave a little bit more time to the students in the afternoon to get around and uh, to 
enjoy. <laughs> We have a first question from Vicky, who is asking, do we obtain ECTS credits uh, by the end of the program? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the, um, the four modules are coming up to eight credits. So each module, attend, uh, four right? Modules. Well, but each module is independent. So two, mo two ECTS, two credits uh, per mm -hmm. module are given to the students. And a certificate at the end of each module uh, will be given to the student as well. Okay, and great. one project for each module. <laughs> right, <laughs> one case study, one project for each module. Yes, it's quite hard. Yeah. And we have another question uh, from Xiu uh, on research. Mm -hmm. um, I think she is asking, if I'm interested in, in the research area, is there any exposure I could get with researchers or laboratories? Yes, of course. Uh, well, each week is designed in a way that there are courses, like conferences, small conferences, each morning and also uh, there are visits, uh, technical visits and also uh, meetups with different researchers mm -hmm. so students can visit our laboratories already and also uh, meet with different researchers who explain their methodologies so yeah for every week there are new researchers that will come and talk about their innovative ways etc. So. And I would even add uh, the fact that we have, uh, I mean, don't forget that it's schools mm. that the, the students are getting into. So uh, schools and labs. So mm. obviously we have PhD students and they can meet uh, even informally with all our PhD students as well. So we have some in the BIM area, we have some in the uh, road materials, mm. uh, we have some in the energy efficiency. So yeah, they could, do, they could very well interact with, uh, with our students. Okay, great. Uh, Maria is also asking if uh, all the classes are taught in English. Yes, <laughs> oh, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, oh, no, no, except for the French. <laughs> French <laughs> classes are French, right. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Um, there is also a question uh, from Hakim, uh, who is asking if it's true that nobody speaks English in France and is it going to be difficult to survive in the, in the streets uh, uh, in France? No, that's not true. <laughs> it depends on the, who, uh, who Akim meets on the streets. <laughs> but most of the people do speak English now and they could get around very easily. Uh, I, I would say even in Trois. Yes, right, yes. yes. Yeah. For the basic at least. <laughs> I mean, if he, had to, if he expects someone to have a full conversation in English, maybe not. But on the street, yes. just he to get around, around, he will survive. <laughs> okay, great. Um, could you tell us more about the originality of the program? According to you, what what uh, makes this summer program unique compared to other existing uh, program? I, yeah, the go ahead. Yeah. Or I would say the mix of mm -hmm. teaching, cultural visits, uh, case studies, um, uh, field trips in the corporate environment. Uh, this mix makes it really uh, enriching and, and unique. Um, I would say that that it's it's really uh, it's really a, a full um, yes, bond. So very, yeah. I would also say because uh, there are two yeah. schools, so uh, normally when we go to a summer school, it's just in one place and in one school. But here, there there is this possibility to see two different schools and also two different cities at the mm -hmm. same time. So it's quite, uh, I think, uh, different. <laughs> and usually it's a small group as well. I mean, uh, we usually max out at uh, 25 students, so it's pretty easy to. Uh, to get, I mean, to mingle with the uh, with the other students on mm -hmm. campus. Uh, we have another program, uh, EPF and ESTP run another program of uh, French language mm -hmm. um, besides, and so we have plenty of international students on campus at that mm -hmm. time. So it's, uh, I mean, the the interactions and then um, well, the yeah, the ambience on campus is uh, is pretty nice too. So according to you, why would uh, students uh, choose our summer program for all this? <laughs> <laughs> for all this, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and for friends as well. I mean, uh, <laughs> there's a lot to see. Uh, I'm sure the uh, the interest in, in France is not. Uh, I mean, it's, it's important in the choice of the, the summer program, but the originality of the uh, the modules, I would say. I mean, or at least the, uh, the uh, variety of uh, subjects that are, will be taught. Are interesting yeah. as well. I would say also uh, it's an opportunity to see France in another way and also it's good for the students because they can uh, do some sort of networking not only with the speakers or 
because we have speakers which are lecturers, but also professionals uh, and, and some business innovators, etc. But the researchers also, of course, and also with other students of uh, our campus or other campuses of different parts of the world. I think it, the networking part also is very important. Are the lecturers French or are they come from abroad also? Uh, they come from abroad. Also. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and they all speak English. But um, in addition to that, when we do uh, field trips uh, in the corporate environment, the ones that I was uh, thinking of, uh, most companies do uh, ask for the resume for, from the students. And um, as most companies are interested in the profile of our international students, they could even hope for an internship or they could hope for, uh, you know, coming back to France for a job or yeah, for a master's program yes. and then for a job, something yeah. like that. So it's a good, uh, it's a good way to introduce uh, the students to, uh, to the field. We have a question from Mohamed, but I think you already answered the question. He's answering if our engineers in electronics uh, programs allowed. So yes, 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 yes of course. <laughs> okay. Come on board. <laughs> And Gemma is asking if there are any scholarship possibilities. No, not for the moment, unfortunately. Um, I mean, unless uh, we had uh, last year, we had a group of a uh, few students coming from one university. So if it's a group of students, then maybe we could apply some discounts. Um, but otherwise, uh, not specific uh, scholarships. Maybe I would say they could ask from their own embassies or their mm -hmm. own schools. Sometimes they have the provide yeah, well. sometimes they offer. Or even campus friends yes. uh, via the, um, the French embassy in their country. Uh, I know for China, for example, um, the students from China could, could apply through the embassy and through campus friends and they could get uh, a scholarship. So I guess even a full scholarship. So this is interesting. So yeah, in this way, but you have to come from China. I think I think last year there's a Jordan uh, embassy, I mean the uh, French embassy in Jordan, um, which, uh, which helped out some students as well. Okay, great. And uh, Jimmy is asking what the deadline for registration and payment? Uh, supposedly April 15th. And this is not to, uh, to annoy the students, but it's for uh, it's by experience, it's easier for the students if they apply early for their visa. So obviously they could wait a little bit after that, but uh, as long as they're registered, as long as we have the names and documents for uh, the students, we could wait a little bit. Uh, but it's easier if, if it's done early enough for them. Okay, great. Um, maybe, so we're, we're arriving uh, at the end of the, the Slack chat, uh, maybe you could say a little word to conclude? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, please come on board. We uh, know the, the, uh, the, good, the great interest of, uh, of this and, and students probably know that, but um, once, once they're in France, they're really well pampered, I would say, <laughs> and they're really well taken care of, so it's an easy way to, uh, to get to, to know a little bit more about France, about Paris and Troyes, and uh, about our theme, obviously. So, yeah, we, we would welcome them uh, <laughs> very well. <laughs> and um, I'm just looking forward to seeing them all in France, in Troyes and Paris from 1st to 26th of July. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you all for taking part in to this slide and to both of you for your interventions. Uh, if you have any further questions or doubts, feel free to send us an email. You have all the contact details on both our websites. Right. Uh, if you have missed the beginning of the, the live, the repair will be available online tomorrow on our website. Hopefully, we will be uh, welcoming you next July for our summer program. We hope to see you soon. Sure. Thank you all. <laughs> see you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.